In this quick tip, we're going to have a look at placing constraints with limits. So at the moment, if we look at our model, you can see that I can drag the caliper up and down. I can even drag it through itself. And I've got no real control over the precise placement of that part once I've finished dragging it. So using constraint limits, we can set a, di a distance between two faces. So for instance, I could choose these two faces over here. And rather than just having it set at zero, I can click the little extra box over here and I can choose what I'd like to put in here. So for instance, we could say a minimum of zero, which is its current position. And we could then say a maximum. And I'm going to choose 75 because I can actually see it on the caliper. So I'm going to say 75. And we're going to say use offset as resting position, which means that it'll come back to zero. There's our offset over here. So offset as our resting position, so it'll always snap back to the zero position. And we can give this a name so it's easy to identify. So I'm going to call it caliper movement. And I'm going to apply that. Okay. So what happens that's different to a normal constraint is if we have a look at our constraint over here, which has been named, it has a plus minus negative. And that is our limit. So now I can drag. And as soon as I let go, it snaps back. Now I said 75 was my maximum, so you'll see as I drag it out on the caliper, you can see it gets to 75 and it snaps back. And there we have it, limit constraints. I hope you find that useful.